Er macht einen Doktor am Berlin Brandenburg School for Regenerative Therapies. Um, er hat uh, Mikrobiologie und Virologie studiert, macht seinen Doktor in Immunologie. Ich bitte um einen ganz, ganz herzlichen Applaus für Vene Rambal. You need your microphone, though. Forget the microphone. Should be on. Hello, Vinay. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. <laughs> All right. When you're doing fine, I'm, well, I'm doing well too. So, um, how long have you been in Germany for? Uh, for two years now. For two years. How did you come to study in Berlin? Uh, I mean, believe it or not, I heard a lot about Karibust and the Berliner Pilsner back home. And <laughs> Lord, applause there, Lord. And that was part of the reason, not the only reason, I would say. Not the only reason. Yeah. Isn't? All right. So enjoy the place here. Yes, I am so far. You've been here the last time. That's what you told me, and uh, you saw the slum, and then you decided to participate. Yes, I was sitting right over there, outside, there was no space at all and I quite enjoyed uh, the, the last time and that's why I got motivated to participate uh, in this one. Ich finde das immer ein schöner Grund, also für alle, die sich auch mal einfach hier gekitschelt fühlen mitzumachen, seid bitte nicht so schüchtern. Wir haben übrigens heute vorne Listen ausliegen, ihr könnt euch eintragen, wenn ihr selbst mitmachen möchtet oder vielleicht jemanden kennt, von dem ihr glaubt, Mann, das ist ein Top-Entertainer, der kann direkt auf die Bühne und ist auch wissenschaftlich so versiert. Warum lacht ihr denn alle? Und es sind so viele Menschen drin, da müssen noch mal mehr Leute dabei sein, die sich trauen, hier hochzutreten, Freunde. Das kann doch nicht so schwierig sein. Also bitte. Wie auch immer. Vene, your topic today, your presentation will be about Do two negatives make it positive? That's right. You got 10 minutes. The stage is yours. And this audience is going to give its applause just to you right now. Now, clap your hands, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Thank you. So, good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Vinay Rambal. And I'm uh, studying immunology at the Berlin Brandenburg School for Regenerative Therapies. <laughs> uh, so more specifically, I'm doing my PhD in immunology and in the case, so I'm studying the role of the immune system in the case of human organ transplantations uh, and more precisely in the case of kidney transplantations. So when you transplant, let's say, a kidney from one person to another, Uh, the role of the immune system in this context, that's what I'm studying. Uh, and let me begin my presentation with posing this question, do two negatives make a positive? And through this question, I would attempt to explain to you uh, what exactly I'm doing in my PhD, what kind of questions I'm trying to ask and what progress I've made so far. So let's begin. So. Uh, Let me begin by asking all of you a very simple question. Um, imagine you are sitting uh, in your living room comfortably on your sofa. It's midnight, uh, it's quite dark. <clears throat> And all of a sudden, you see a stranger in your living room. Uh, how would you react? <laughs> so, uh, for instance, uh, you sir, how would you react? Oh, I would react. Yes? I would kick him down. <laughs> okay, uh, that's quite an extreme reaction, but uh, That's perhaps what one might do. So, <clears throat> okay, so if I see a stranger, uh, I would certainly get alarmed because I don't know uh, who the hell this guy is. I don't know his identity. Uh, perhaps he is my enemy. Perhaps he is a robber who would steal something from my house. In this case, uh, something like a radio, it seems. <laughs> Or maybe he is actually a friend of mine. Or maybe it's uh, Christmas Eve and It's Santa Claus, who's there to give you some nice presents and so on. So I would get alarmed. I don't know who this guy is. And that's exactly what happens when you transplant an organ from a donor to a recipient, for instance, a kidney. Now, okay, so it's Uh, common knowledge that when you transplant a human organ from one person to the other, 
uh, this guy gets alarmed and uh, have you ever wondered why that is so? Why or how does uh, the recipient recognize that this new organ is something to be afraid of or to it's something foreign to me? How does it recognize that? <clears throat> so just as all of us have, um, let's say, a fingerprint of ours which is quite unique to us and uh, which is special to us and <clears throat> similarly, every cell on our body, for instance, every cell on this organ and every cell that your body is made up of, has this thing called as the major histocompatibility complex or the MHC. <laughs> Now, please don't get a vocabulary complex. I will explain what this is. So, as I said, just as everybody has their fingerprint, every cell on your body has its own fingerprint, but uh, this fingerprint is in the form of some molecules present on every cell. So, shown over here are these molecules that make up this thing called as the MHC. Now, just as your fingerprint Every human being's MHC is unique to him or her and it's different for every person uh, which means that the MHC of the donor and the MHC of the recipient is different. My MHC, your MHC, everybody has a different fingerprint on their hands and everybody has a different MHC or these molecules on every cell of your body. So it's kind of like a signature that you have on every cell of yours. Uh, in case you're wondering, that's not my signature, that's Barack Obama's signature. <clears throat> so, to sum it up, um, every human being has a different MHC and when you transplant an organ from a donor to a recipient, the immune system of this recipient sees this MHC on the cells of this organ and it gets alarmed because it knows what its fingerprint is and it sees a, a foreign fingerprint on this organ and that's why it knows that uh, whatever has come in is something foreign and it's an alien entity and that's why it gets alarmed. <clears throat> now what are the components involved uh, in this process of immune recognition? Now shown over here is the immune system with the various kinds of cells that it perhaps has. Now I would uh, take this opportunity to go in detail and explain uh, about all of these cells. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I will just explain maybe a few of the cells that might be uh, that might matter for this talk. So, for instance, you have this cell called as the CD4 uh, positive cell. You have this cell called as the CD8 positive cell. Uh, I'm sure quite a few of you may have heard of these cells because they are quite well known for a long time. And uh, in the case of HIV and so on, you hear of these cells. <coughs> but What's quite interesting is this recently discovered set of cells which are called CD4 negative, CD8 negative cells are also called as double negative cells. Now uh, keep this cell in mind uh, because that's what my talk is focused around uh, later. <coughs> so uh, as I explained, uh, this uh, foreign guy, this alien stranger has entered into your body. Your immune cell has seen it has a different MHC and now it's alarmed. So, um, so the immune system doesn't start uh, killing it directly, it waits for a while, maybe it's your friend or maybe it's your enemy and uh, this is a very complex and dynamic process in which all your immune cells which I just showed you, they all start talking and shouting and they are trying to decide what to do and there are some cells which start shouting, they say kill, kill, kill <laughs> and that's because they say that uh, this guy is bad and this new organ is uh, foreign and I should kill it. Whereas, there are some cells <coughs> which say, come darling, come my sweetheart, give me a hug. <laughs> and there are, so basically, these cells which uh, say kill, they attack the organ. And these cells which say, uh, okay, don't kill, they ca cause acceptance of this organ. Now, this uh, shown over here, this balance, uh, which is quite tilted towards this uh, nice looking guy. Um, this is the scenario which most of often happens in the clinic which means that when you transplant organs the cells which say kill or the cells which attack are predominant as shown here and that means that your organ gets attacked by these cells and uh, this organ is rejected and this patient uh, will die. Um, now if I am a patient uh, who has just received an organ transplantation I certainly don't want to hear this. 
I would want to share this. Meaning, uh, it's quite a uh, it's quite um, a favorable outcome for a clinician or a surgeon or an immunologist that if you can perhaps uh, by some means have these cells which uh, accept this organ to predominate in the body after transplantation. And that's why uh, it's quite relevant in research to focus on such cells which cause acceptance of this organ. And that's when these double negative T cells come in, as it was shown quite recently that they may perhaps be capable of accepting this organ. Now this was shown only in some mouse models or some experiments with mice. Uh, I don't think these mice, they would rather look like this. So we don't know too much about them, but it was shown in mice. Now how did we discover about their properties? So quite simply, there were some donor mice which donated an organ to a recipient mice. And as expected, uh, this was attacked and you got rid of this organ and it was rejected. But when these donor mice gave an organ to the recipient mice, and you had some double negative T cells infused into these recipient mice, we saw that they accepted this organ. So we had a clue that these cells are quite important as they may cause acceptance of this organ. And that's what the topic of my PhD deals with. I'm trying to study the property of these double negative T cells in human beings to try to determine in what way we can perhaps manipulate them uh, to cause acceptance of organs. So I'm basically trying to study the properties of these cells for instance, what kinds of chemicals they secrete. For instance, uh, their numbers after transplantation, do they increase or do they decrease and so on. And all this in humans, since we don't know much about these cells in humans. <clears throat> now, what I'm basically doing is, I receive blood from these transplant patients and at various different points of time. So one month after transplantation, two months after transplantation and so on. And I analyze uh, this blood for the presence of this double negative T cell. So what I have uh, discovered so far and what my outlooks for the future are, are as follows. It was seen that the number of these double negative T cells increases after transplantation. And after this, uh, I was quite uh, encouraged and I thought maybe I would win, win the Nobel Prize or so, because uh, this means that these cells are relevant in humans after transplantation. Uh, but surprise, surprise, as it happens in research, I discovered that they secrete this chemical called as interferon gamma, which is a bad chemical and this chemical may cause rejection of the organ. So there's still a lot more work to be done in this case. In the end, I would like to conclude by saying that we know that two negatives make a positive in mathematics, but whether these double negative cells equal a positive outcome in transplantations, we still have to find out. Thank you. Gracias y aplausos.